Hello my squishies! Welcome to the Caledonian Wool Company's Orkney Seascape Felt Along. Um, for those of you who have not joined me before, welcome. Um, I'm gonna, we're doing this live, so I'm gonna give it a couple of seconds to make sure that I get somebody in the comments saying that they can hear me and see me and everything is good. But while we're waiting for someone very kindly to say hello, um, or message me um, if you're here I will I'll introduce you guys who have not felted before to the basics of needle felting and then we will make this or something similar to this beautiful Orkney seascape so in your kit you should have everything that we need to make this seascape. So you'll have a foam mat and that's what we want to felt onto. You'll have, this, this serves, um, says, <laughs> I ramble nonsense, I apologise in advance. So the, the foam mat saves your surfaces and it just makes it easier for felting. We've got our pre-felt, so this is the material that we're going to felt onto. You should have an outline, very difficult one today, uh, of <laughs> what we're going to do. We've also got your needles, so these are your felting needles. They are very sharp, please do not stab yourself. Um, we've got the sharp barbed end and a hooked end at the other side. Um, needle breakages does happen. If you break a needle, find the bit that's broken and dispose of it carefully. To help us felt a little bit, I've also included one of these. So this is a needle felting felting needle holder. It's been a long week this week. I'm going to be all over the place. Um, so this holder, the way we do it is there's a little peg in that side there. So you just pull out that peg, pop your needle in the groove with the hook over the narrow end and then pop the narrow end back in. So I'll do that one more time. So grab the needle Put the needle in the narrow in the groove with the hook over the narrow end and then pop it back in so that is how to use that now I don't tend to use this you get these in single ones in three six different sizes and um, it does help a lot of people so I have included it in the kit I don't use it I just hold my needles so I hold one sometimes I hold a couple so you'll see me throughout this I'll swap the amount of needles that I'm holding just as I'm going. So we've got the needles, we've got the holder, we've got the mat, now we've got the most important thing, the colours. So this lovely fluffy stuff is Shet most, uh, pretty much all Shetland wool, there's a little bit of possibly Chivia in there as well. So this has come off the sheep, it's been washed, dyed, oh hello in the comments! I'm going to assume that you can hear me because you are saying hello. Um, as I'm filming this live, you might, uh, if you're watching this after the fact, you might not be able to see the comments that I'm responding to, and you might think I'm just rambling to strange people on the internet, which is what I am doing. <laughs> but yeah, so we've got our felt here. Now, to work with this stuff, so it's been washed, brushed, and dyed, and sort of loosely held together. So we're going to work with little bits at a time. And to do that, you grab your felt, have your hands quite far apart and just gently pull off little bits like that. So you'll see this is the length of the fibre that's on the sheep. So if you have your hands too close together, you're not going to be able to pull it apart. You're fighting against its, its own length and you don't want to be breaking it. So have your hands nice and far apart and pull. And if there's any twist in it, it's not going to pull apart either because twist is what makes yarn hold together. So you want to make sure it's not twisted and you've got your hands nice and far apart. And I'm going to say this a lot tonight and I, uh, my people watching will laugh quite a lot. We're going to be using such tiny amounts at certain stages. You can just pull out these like little tiny, you can't even see it, but it will make a big difference in the picture. So that's our very basic and quick and dirty introduction to needle felting. Oh, one more thing. To avoid needle breakage, 
we always want to be stabbing straight in and out. You can do it at an angle, but as long as it's always straight. Because if you go in and bend, that's when you're more likely to snap your needles. Okay, so let's get felting. So I'm gonna start at the top and we're gonna work our way sort of down and forwards. So I'm gonna grab this blue here. So this is sky blue. There's a few different blues. We've got the sky blue, we've got the sea blue, but we're gonna go for the sky blue just now. And so I'm gonna grab, so with the sky, we can be a little bit more generous. We don't have to go so tiny yet. I'm gonna fill, just placing down, down to that, a little bit above that horizontal line. I'm going to definitely go over the edges because, oh, that's one thing I've forgotten. It's on the other side of the room. I'll go and grab it in a second. We need a frame to frame this because the frame's going to, you want to make sure it doesn't too narrow and it covers all of the edges. So I'm just laying this down and at the moment I'm going to be working quite fast because I like to sort of lay down the basic colours and then go back in and tidy everything up and add more layers and add more depth. So if you think I'm not felt I'm not felting in quite thoroughly yet, I'm not. We're gonna go back and do that later. So just now all I'm doing is very lightly felting in. So I've just done a few stabs just to show where it's gonna go and you can see on the back it's starting to felt through. So at this stage because it's only lightly felted and if we want to move anything it's really easy to just pick it up and move it that's the other reason I don't tend to felt it in well until oh going off screen again until we're further on in the process so we've got a little bit of sky we're going to add in some clouds to our sky so with this fluffy one so this one's a chibi at slivers this one is slightly you can see we've got a cream in here and we've got a white fluffy one. So the white fluffy one's what we're going to use for the clouds and we're going to use it for the shoreline. So I'm going to take, this is where I start saying it, tiny amounts and just laying that over the whole area just so you've got like the hints of a summer's day haziness almost not quite clouds but there's just differences in the sky there we go so that's there so that's quick and easy hopefully everyone's doing keeping up with me so far oh yes that was what I was going to mention um so this is recorded live but you'll be watching this later on so you can pause me you can speed me up you can mute me as my parents have discovered. Hi mum. Um, so don't be afraid to rewind, watch bits again and do it at your own speed. So let's get on to a little bit of hill now. So I'm going to start with the, so we've got two, oh I've got a mess here already. We've got two greens here, the darker and the lighter. I'm going to start with the darker building up a base and then I'm going to go lighter on top. So I'm just going to lay it horizontally again. So just now we're still laying horizontally. Later on we might make lay it down differently and that'll give different effects as well. So I'm just laying, so this is about what? Centimetre? Centimetre wide hill but you are in charge of your picture. If you want to do a bigger hill or a smaller hill you are more than welcome to. I'm just giving inspiration here. You are the master of your own picture. So I've laid down my dark green stripe and it's even got little, it's not going to be straight just now, I'm not aiming for straight. I'm going to take lighter green and lay it on top and a little bit higher. Now I'm going to layer up the green a little bit later on but for just now so that we're sort of blocking in the colours I'm just going to lay it down there so the more you like layer up the colours and the more you add thin layers the 
nicer and more interesting the texture will be. So I always say this. So at this stage and for the next wee while, it's going to look like a mess. Don't worry about it. Mine looks like a mess. It's the refining later on that it will suddenly just come together. And you're like, oh my god, it's amazing. I love it. Uh, but just now we're looking like a mess and we're fine with that. I am totally fine with that. Okay, so we've got, oh, oh I'm going to put a little, just a, a little tiny layer of the darker green over the lighter green. Maybe a tiny bit more. And that's just popping in sort of areas of shadow, like little miniature hills. I don't know, is my camera bright enough? Might see if I can, a little bit brighter. What am I at? There we go. Also, while I'm doing that, I'm going to have a sip of coffee from my giant mug that is next to me. And it's actually really cold now. That was tasty. <laughs> I'll keep drinking it, don't worry. And then we're going to add a layer. So we've got a sort of cliff edge. So I looked this up, but I have completely forgotten um what part of Orkney there's sort of little cliffs in the sea below so we're going to add in our little cliff edge with the lighter of the, oh the lighter of the brown to start with and then we're going to actually work no let's start with the darker and put lighter on top so this beautiful dark brown I'm going to add so at the right hand side it's going to be quite thin I'm going to let it build up in size as it goes across now yes it looks very dark and scary just now but we're going to add the lighter brown on top let that go along and again you can see I'm working right past the edge here remind me in a second to go and get a frame I'm going to pop a little bit of, so I'm layering up here. Hello! I believe, is that Ali in the comments? I think that's Ali in the comments. Hello. You might have been, mm. you don't have all the colours yet for this. But pop into the shop if you do want to do this one. So I do a uh, monthly felt along and I'll see these people popping into the comments and um, but this is one that's out out of order this month it's all, it's all we're all over the place and um, this is a special one especially for the Orkney seascape so it's the wrong day and everything's confusing I'm gonna put a little bit of light there but again this isn't gonna look perfect just now <laughs> excellent um ah, hello <laughs> and i'm confusing you with the wrong day so we've oh yeah what was i saying this isn't going to look perfect just now it's going to look messy do not worry about that this is the messy stage we've got to love the mess so i'm going to pop now with the cream and we're going to start a little bit of beach and again i don't want it to be straight i'm going to sort of give it a little bit of a curve I know it feels silly putting cream on top of cream, but it, do, it, it does make a difference. There we go. I'm curving that round. Now we are again going to go back over and do all sorts of exciting stuff. And this is really fast so please if you are struggling just pause the video rewind it but now my favorite bit this beautiful beautiful blue oh my god i'm in love with it i have eight kilos of this stuff it's a long story don't ask so we're going to lay down a load of this blue I'm 
out of the base, and the base glue. And just bring that up to the edge of the sand. There we go. And then I'm going to take the next blue. This again is a beautiful blue. Um, I don't know how I would describe it. It's gorgeous. <laughs> and I'm going to start laying that. So we're going to start going quite fine now. Well, not fine, but thinner than we were. And lay that sort of predominantly nearer the bottom, but letting it work up getting sort of thinner and thinner as you get onto the shore so it's giving it a sort of a sense of sense of, bleh, bleh, bleh. I can't speak a sense of depth so as if you're coming to the shore of this beautiful Orkney Island which I haven't been to yet and I really want to get there um, so I'm very jealous if you've been to Orkney. I've made it to Shetland, which is past Orkney, but I've not actually made it onto Orkney. And I've got, I believe there's lots of standing stones and some amazing stuff there. I really have to get there. Okay, we've almost got everything laid down in roughly the right spaces. We've got one more thing that's going to make it just absolutely pop and then we're gonna go in and start fiddling and sort of playing with bits we're gonna go back to the beautiful chibi it's the fluffy the fluffy slivers and I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna lay them along the <laughs> I don't know if you heard that <laughs> but that was a fairy blowing its horn we've got a fairy in Fort William uh, visiting not a fairy a cruise ship visiting Fort William at the moment and that was it I believe calling all its passengers back to the ship so I'm just laying this fluffy stuff along the edge and I'm going to take it down a wee bit and this is going to look like waves so I'm just going to take small bits of it and laying them horizontally again just make little little waves every so often and you can spread it out a wee bit nice and fine see how I'm like pulling it and spreading it out and that gives so we've got the mixture between this darkness and the waves so now I'm at this stage We're going to stop for a second as I run, run across the room and get a frame. So in your kits you've also got these. There we go. So this is the frame we're going to pop it in. So you can just hold it over and sort of get an idea of how much of it you're going to see. Although remember it's going to sort of, oh hiccups, it's going to look a little bit bigger than the inside here. There we go, I quite like, I actually like, this is why I like to do extra. Because I can always find my favourite spot later on. But we're going to quickly have a look at it in the frame and then this will show us kind of what we need to work on. So this, we felt it onto this quite a lot without taking it off the mat. So when we pull it off, just going to pull it slowly like that. You should do this every so often anyway. And then you can straighten it up and give it a good smooshing and you'll see it kind of fluffs up a little bit. But to pop it in the frame, what we do is we unscrew until it's sort of as wide as it can go, but you don't want it to fall apart. I also don't do it on the mat, so I'm going to move the mat up. I'm going to pop the inside there and then lay it down and kind of feel where I want it to go and then just pop it over. 
I think I want it to be a little bit ooh, a little bit higher up there and what I'm going to do actually is now I want to make this island a little bit smaller I think and I've, so that I can get in a little bit more water and sky but I'm pretty happy with that if you want to pop it right in and then you can kind of see it like that as well so I definitely need to put loads more texture in the hill make it a little bit smaller and then I think I'm going to be happy with that so there are a few things as well that if you're not sure what you need to do to fix it to make it look what it is what you want it to look like you can, I like to take a photograph of it and then have a look at the photograph or send it to somebody and then they'll give me feedback or just standing up, going and getting a cup of tea, having a break from it and coming back and looking at it again really helps. Looking at it backwards in a mirror also helps. Anything to sort of refresh your eyes and bring it back new. I'm going to sip coffee again, hold on. Ah. Yeah, and also just stepping away for a night and coming back tomorrow. So we're not going to frame this up tonight. We're not probably not even going to finish this tonight. We're going to get spend another sort of 10, 15 minutes playing around and adding in textures. And then I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it for a day or two. Give myself fresh eyes and come back in a couple of days and just give it a really good felting all over. Just in fact, I'm going to do it now while I'm chatting. I'm just stabbing it in. Ooh, <laughs> if I could get the needle. <laughs> stabbing it in all over. So I'll do this for sort of 10, 15 minutes when you come back and you'll notice there's a big change in it. But we're not gonna do much, too much of that tonight. I'm just gonna do a wee bit. I also want to Now I've included the frame because it makes it easy and nice in the complete kit but if you don't want to frame it like that, if you want to have it square and frame it, it is your picture to do what you like with. I'm not wandering off screen again. Okay so I'm going to move, so because I felt it down these bits better, I left out this bit because I want to make this hill slightly smaller. So to do that, I'm literally just going to pull it down and then felt it down. So it's a little bit narrower. And I'm going to pop just a tiny bit of blue over the top there to cover up any bits that I didn't quite get. That's, just, that's This is why I love felting so much. It's so forgiving in the, with mistakes. And even if you have felted it down well, you can still, can still pull it back, chop it off, add stuff on top of it. It's such a forgiving medium. It's lovely. I also think I want to make this cliff a little bit smaller so I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to just scoosh it up and there we have it that's better I'm much happier with the sizing of all that I felt that I really want to get a lot of the sea in, I think. I absolutely adore the sea. So I'm going to even pull the sea a little bit higher up onto the beach. And that's sort of, I like that this little bit here where I'm putting that higher sea 
almost looks like the sea is lapping because you can see the sand underneath it like you would be able to at that point point. and again I'm gonna put my little cheviot slivers along the edge again just to make those fluffy little waves there you go oh much happier with that okay so let's start doing some layering because layering is just everything so my, my pile of fiber there's a mess at the side so I'm gonna layer up some of the green so I'm gonna take some of the dark green and make sure there we go that there is a dark green border between where the cliff meets the grass I couldn't think of the word there for a second. Oh dear. It's been a really busy week in the shop. It's been really nice, but my brain is absolutely melted. I cannot brain currently. So I'm laying that little line of dark green between the edge of the cliff. And that gives it so that, like the top is where like the most of the light would hit it and that's sort of going almost over the edge of the cliff if that makes sense i mean it makes sense to me but i'm i might make up a lot about these i'm going to do the same with the actual cliffs so i'm going to take the dark brown and make sure that there is a line of dark brown where it hits the sand so again, to give it that little, almost an edge, almost an outline, not quite. Just to give it a little bit of depth of field almost. I like it the way that the cliff sort of hide it quite, the, 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 no, I'm broken. <laughs> I've stopped. My brain has stopped. So the the cliff is going from wider to narrower to almost nothing at that side to give it that sense of movement and depth in the picture. Oh dear. Who let, who let me do a stream on a Saturday night? Now I'm going to add some more layers in. Oh, let's move it up so you can see some more layers in the sea so I'm going to layer up this blue again so I'm going to put a thin I know it feels very con contradictory a thin layer of blue the lighter blue over the darker blue and bear with me there is madness in my method lay that down and then I'm going to do the same again but with the darker blue Laying that down on top. So this is almost blending, but not letting dark patches and light patches come through, but sort of blending it a little bit. And that just gives it like a really nice texture. I know I'm, I'm felting like excessive areas that aren't going to get seen, but I'm fine with that. There we go. Because I might, especially when I come back in a day or two and have a look at it, I might decide to completely change the layout of where I want it. So I might decide to have loads of sea and just a tiny sliver of sky. This looks very squinty. There we go. Um, loads of sea and tiny sliver of sky. I might do the opposite. If we've got all these options, we're not fixed down into one thing. I like having options. Don't put me in a corner. Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to put in, I think, because the more you felt it in, the more bits will disappear. So they sort of almost felt into the fabric itself. I have a hair in my mouth. Or a sheep hair in my mouth. <laughs> so the, and so you can, even if you've done things before, you can do them again. So I'm going to add in the waves again because they're starting to sort of disappear a little bit. I'm also going to pop in some more clouds. 
and if you want you can even do the same as we did in the sea and add blue over the clouds to really just make it this misty so the sky blue over the clouds to make it like the mistiest day just a little touch of haze there we go that's starting to look pretty good almost there do a little bit more I think texturing at the waterline just to build that up you can even leave that reasonably not felted in if you want sort of a texture now I'm not I'm spotting lots of little black ones I don't want to so there we go you can just pull them out clean up the water a little bit There we go. Okay, let's have a look in the frame, see how we're feeling about it, and then go back and do a little bit more. I'm also going to take a sip of coffee again. So you can see, if, well, hopefully you can see there's a big bulge there. So I'm just going to straighten that out give it a little bit of a smoosh and the smoosh will help get it'll sort of smooth out some of the needle marks but that's looking good I don't know if it's I don't know if the camera's picking it up quite as well as it is in person but I'm really happy with that I'm really loving the sort of wave texture so let's try it in the frame and let's see where we want it to go Ah oh, yes, I'm a lot happier with the amount. I might open this up a wee bit more, so it's giving me more. Oh. Okay, well, there we go. Now you want to, if this was, so say this is your final. Oh, <laughs> it keeps popping off. Say this is your final. Your you're completely happy with it you've spent another good sort of 20 minutes felting all over this is your final framing you'd want to make sure that that is sort of in parallel with whatever you want to be parallel in the picture you'd secure it so it's sitting nice and even all the way around and then tighten this up as tight as you can go and then once that's all done, look at that. Ah, so simple, but just so beautiful. And um, once <laughs> it, once you're completely finished and happy, all you need to do is chop around with your scissors the excess and cut it off. Or if you're not brave, you can also kind of smoosh it in as well. But, right, I'm going to go over it. So we've still got, well, we've still got a wee bit of time left. You want a little bit more of my ramblings. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I haven't actually, have I been too rambly this evening? I haven't had any interesting Orkney facts yet. Has anyone got any interesting Orkney facts in the comments? Looking at you, Mum. While I just have a little, little bit of a play and finish this off. Where am I going to start? I think I want to work on these cliffs a little bit more. So I'm going to take some of the black and kind of scrumple it a little bit to give it a little bit of texture. So this is just a tiny, tiny amount. Because I want to have it not quite as horizontal, I think. Have some sort of vertical lines dotting about in the cliff. And the same with the lighter brown. I'm going to scrumple some up and 
add it on in places so it gives a little bit of a little bit of play a little bit of movement so nothing it's not all so horizontal I'm going to add a little bit to the hill as well so I'm going to just spend a wee bit of time adding thin layers I'm even going to take a tiny bit of this brown and pop it in the hill in places so that's just going to give again texture and depth is what we're looking for If you think so if you're doing like I think this might have been too much brown you've got the option of either taking it off or in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to add colors on top because that's going to just subtle make it so it's still going to show through but it's going to bring it down a wee bit and it's going to again add more depth texture so hopefully you can see it well enough I'm gonna even add a tiny now bear with me on this I may take this back I reserve the right to be wrong and undo it but just where the um, waterline hits the sand I'm gonna add the thinnest I reserve the right to take this back because it's not in my original design. The thinnest line of the, the lighter brown. Oh, interesting Orkney fact. Orkney has 70 islands which make up the archipelago? Could be wrong on that. Um, 20 of which are inhabited. So there's loads of little uninhabited islands all over Orkney. Thank you in the comments. Um, is it an archipelago? I have questions. Am I making up words? Ah, I like that. There we go. So we've got that little line. And if I felt it in a little bit more, it'll disappear a little bit. So that little dark line there, which we can add a little bit of light on top, is giving the hint of where this the sand is wet so it's being so the water is just touching it and that just adds a little bit of definition to that sand oh I like that I might spread out a tiny bit more all over the sand and just give it like little wet patches oh another fact Oh, that is an interesting fact. <laughs> you want me to share it with you? <laughs> uh, Orkney Islands have been inhabited. Oh, I can't see the edge of that comment. Hold on. Oh, I need to see that. Make it bigger. Inhabited for at least 8,500 years. That is a long time to be inhabited. That is amazing because you've got all those oh you've got those amazing houses on Orkney oh I need to go to Orkney all those amazing houses on Orkney that are like this the stone oh, there's a word for them I can't remember the word the stones all built up and the grass kind of goes up to them ha oh. I went to one of them on Shetland when I was there I wonder if there's a, is there a rivalry between Orkney and Shetland should I be mentioning Shetland in the same breath that I'm mentioning Orkney if there's not a rivalry we're going to make one up we're going to start one now I might 
Oh, let's let's be bold again. I reserve the right to take this back and be wrong. I'm gonna take some of the cream and pop it in the cliffs as well. just to give it some little lighter patches. There we go. No, I'm happy with that. It gives it a little bit of texture and light hitting it. Right, I'm going to go over it for the next, once I've had a sip of coffee, for the next two minutes, three minutes, then I think I'm done for the night. I think it's at a stage where I'm We've got all the colours in, you guys know what you're doing. My coffee is stone cold. And then we're going to have a break for a couple of days and you guys are going to come back to it in a couple of days. You're going to look at it again and go, oh my god it looks amazing, I'm so proud of myself. do another good all over a stabby stab and then pop it in the frame and you're ready to go so what's that what am I at 49 minutes that's not bad going for having a completed felted picture oh this is this is the workout right here you don't have to go as fast as me. You can take your time, have more breaks. <laughs> I just want to give it a good... And the more you do this, you'll notice every time you pull it off, that it gets sort of st almost stiffer, more felted together, more secure. That's why you want to go over it for a good wee while. I am super happy with that. So let's pop it in the frame. And let's say that we have felted Orkney. I'm gonna I'm gonna make that bold statement. We have felted all, all of Orkney. No, we have not felted all of Orkney. But we've felted a good amount of Orkney. And made a lovely picture. And hopefully, yeah, I can feel that stiffening up quite nicely. Um, hopefully, I have not rambled quite so much. Okay, so I'm going to level it up. Do I want it there or do it? Yeah. Because I like that little bit of the side. Let's pop it in there. I do it on, sort of push it to the edge of the table to pull it in. And then... So I'm going to, I'm going to bring in my half finished design at the back. There we have it. Orkney. Thank you guys so much for joining me. You're now all my, you're all my squishies now, <laughs> as I like to say. Let's make that a nice little picture. There, there we go. You're all my squishies. Thank you so much for uh, this evening. I hope you have enjoyed felting. We have a Facebook group if you want to post your finished pictures on Facebook. The link is below. Uh, let's see if I can do it. The link is below. Um, and if you could do all the YouTube things, like, subscribe, comment, I really appreciate it all. And I really enjoy doing this. So thank you so much. I am going to go away and probably felt some more, to be honest. <laughs> oh, I might go home. I think it might be home time. But thanks again. Happy felting. I hope you guys enjoyed. See you!